Still, there's about 300 people waiting to get in. And yes, a lot of them are wearing red to support the RCMP. Tens of thousands of dollars to the taxpayer in food, travel, leisure activities. And the other leaders did such a good job of portraying Hudak as this person who's going to end the way of life as you know it. And as you said before, this does not include the 20 or so pending charges. You have the kitchen, you have the living room, you have the master bedroom. It's a split decision. It's not unanimous. This is actually a road. You can see where it gets cut off right over here. If you can look behind me, you can see this body of water. That's not a lake. Today, it holds the hearts of all Canadians, and many are going to be crowding the area where you're at this hour. Uh, Karen's the numbers tell that story. 2,000 uniformed men and women attending the visitation yesterday. The RCMP says they expect thousands to pack service place behind me. And like you said, Prime Minister Stephen Harper, Premier Jim Prentice, all of the big heavy hitters will be in attendance today. We're also going to have Nolan Krauss, the mayor of St. Albert. He's been very vocal saying how this has been a tragedy for his community. Tell us more about that hockey coach, a resource officer at an elementary school. Mm -hmm. So really tied into his community, wasn't he? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, a little under a decade ago, he moved from the Atlantic to here. He was a paramedic back there. He became an RCMP officer. And he and his wife say that they love the RCMP detachment of St. Albert to death. He was a big part of this community, and you could see it. There's actually white ribbons tied to the trees along the parade route. We saw gifts and donations at the RCMP detachment. What did he say about the big merger? Well, he did confirm that four to five weeks ago, the Wild Rose did approach him and his party about joining the government. This is before Ian Donovan and Kerry Toll crossed themselves, earning the wrath of leader Danielle Smith. He also says that for democracy in Alberta, it's in, quote, good shape. Says that they still have the three opposition parties, though he's decimated the one that gave him any threat. So what's the latest from her and perhaps the other MLAs who defected along with her? Well, for the next week or so, or month or so, pundits are going to be talking about how Smith has abandoned the Wild Rose Party. But there are about three big storylines coming out on the opposition side of this. One, who will be the next official opposition? The Liberals, who have the same amount of MLAs as the Wild Rose right now, they've already asked the Speaker to give them the official opposition status. Another ringer could be Joe Anglin, the lone independent here. He could actually form a coalition. For Chris Boudreau, wandering thoughts don't wander for long. When I'm by myself and it's nighttime and the stars are out, I do a lot of thinking. Of how things could have ended differently. And the worst part is when I think about what Damien would have gone through in his last moments. For a son lost in a foreign land. Wish he would come home every day for a cause that took his life but I guess that can't happen this past winter Boudreaux received the news her 22 year old son Damien had died fighting as a jihadist in Syria his story is just one of a growing tale of young Canadians seduced by radical Islam when Damien converted to Islam at age 17 his mother says it was good for the troubled team it gave him peace and a sense of purpose but only three years later, everything had changed. He was attending a new mosque and a radical study group here in downtown Calgary, many of whose members would leave their families and also go overseas to fight. Deep in Red Deer River country, even under the blanket, the long Alberta winter. Just on the side hill over here. You can still find There's six of them there. Things that capture the imagination. That's a young one in the back there. A short walk up the hill, Freezing. and you see them, Alberta's wild horses. They dot the landscape, eating what they can. But even up there, they have to paw so hard, eh? Caring for their young. They're not too worried. <laughs> A wild species. Oh, is he lifting his head now? Entirely their own. Mrs. Stallion would look at us. The way that they have evolved to survive and, you know, in this environment here, just, they captured my heart a while ago and uh, they still have it. No one can argue these horses of the Alberta prairies are not a sight to see. But according to the government, this is a case of too much of a good thing. Murray Langard and two others would deny Wren freedom. A 33-year veteran of the Regina Police Force who is now retired 
Langard says he doesn't remember Wren specifically. He did hundreds of hearings. But on the language used, citing a first conviction for assault at age 15, charged for numerous crimes involving violent weapons, and ingrained attitudes, values, and beliefs that support crimes, Langard says this was serious. We would have been very convinced that he was a danger, or you wouldn't, it wouldn't have been written like that. Just pointing out that his, his lack of responsibility, and, and, and not only that, it's been growing over the years. What is the Crown's position then, please, on release? Your Worship, we have agreed on a joint release uh, in the amount of $4,500. In September 2014, Wren would get bail with two pending cases involving weapons and 61 convictions to his name. The Crown making no argument to keep him behind bars. It would be the last time police would have Wren until the shooting just two weeks ago. Langard says he can't comment on the bail decision. He doesn't know the facts. Just what he saw all those years ago. But he's a dangerous man, yeah. At that time, like what happened since then, I don't know. Now we do. I'm Joshua Skernick, and this is a Sun News Special Report.